Claude AI seems to have a lot of different models to choose from. In today's video, let's find out which one we would choose for what. Because as you just saw, it seems like Claude just wants to do every type of model there is. You got Sonic, Haiku, Opus. Which one do we choose? Let's find out in this video. Welcome back. Let's find out why we use any of these different type of models found in Claude. One very overarching theme that you'll see in any AI chatbot like provider is typically they will break it down into like three major types of models. So in this context, we have Sonnet, Haiku, and Opus. As a overarching, like what the heck is going on? Haiku is for fast in, fast out. Think of it like a search engine. Sonnet is going to be your go-to for day-to-day -day task. And Claude 3 Opus is going to be for higher level workflows for very much in-depth questions with in-depth responses. Now, let me go over some example prompts we would use for these different type of models and how to leverage this best. Starting off here with Claude Haiku. And no, I'm not gonna read you a haiku right now. You're gonna wanna leverage the haiku model for very simple questions like, how do I make really good barbecue? So simply just asking it, how do I make really good barbecue ribs? Hit enter here, we'll get a fast output. Notice how the prompt itself is almost like how we would have searched the internet, you know, two, three years ago before these AI models really hit mainstream. This is going to be much more the model you use like you were in a Google search, a Yahoo search, just simply searching the internet for a fast response. What's also really nice though, is that you already know how it was. Back in the day, if you searched that, you clicked on an article, you already got hit with a newsletter CTA, put your email here, or you got hit with a bunch of ads. <laughs> with AI chatbots now, we can get very fast answers to relevant information. So we got a nice little barbecue recipe here on how to cook the best barbecue ribs. And if you choose to do so, you can take it one step further here and either download as Markdown or a PDF. Send it to your friend. This is how you cook barbecue ribs. In addition to getting fast input and output with the Haiku model, you can leverage different tools. Now, one that's probably gonna be very important for you to know about is gonna be the web search tool. If you don't turn that on, these models are trained to a certain limit. This is all the models. This is every model basically <laughs> found on different websites. Each one will have its own version of web searching. This gives you the most up-to-date information on relevant topics. So we can proctor stuff like stock prices, weather, or you know maybe there's some new cooking recipes out there. Give me some news about new cooking recipes, hit enter here, and this will actually access the internet, which is cool. You'll see a little function here, searching the web, and get your answer here. Typically the workflow in this context is we're gonna output here, some paragraphs, and then an external link to the relevant information and where it was grabbed from the internet. Like this nice little article from Whole Foods. The next big thing, and I guess the next big thing is this blue jasmine tea bar, which actually doesn't look that bad. I kinda like that. If you're interested in a full breakdown of the chat GPT models like O3, O4 mini, all that situation, I'm gonna leave a video in the description down below. You can check it out. Let's jump back to the video. That's Haiku. On to Sonnet. Sonnet, in most cases, is going to be your go-to in your daily workflow. No matter your profession, no matter the context, you're typically going to opt for Sonnet. Or obviously, if you're just like, give me the best boba place in SF, then you'll use Haiku, but that's a whole different situation. Sonnet is going to be for major workflows. One example of this is obviously coding. There is a lot of debate in the industry of what is the best AI model for coding, but one that seems to always come up into conversation is the Claw 3.7 Sonnet. So we're going to orientate ourselves to use this model for more labor-intensive workflows. So for example, build out an entire React landing page for a barbecue rib company I want to make. I want to call it Texas-style ribs. Barbecue. Barbecue seasoning. I like it. Hit enter. Now in reality, when coding, at least with Sonnet, you obviously provide more context with the files or just really start building out a full-blown application within Sonnet or, you know, in an integrated development environment like Cursor. But this logic also applies to other workflows, such as if you want to learn how to edit a video in a certain way, you'd probably opt for 3.7 Sonnet to teach you these ways. We're getting a lot of code, looking really cool. Now, one thing that I want to point out that you may be asking yourself is like, Corbin, this is cool, but let's say I want to focus on more of copywriting oriented work, e.g. article writing, social media posts, everything of that nature. 3.7 Sonnet works, obviously. Like you could ask anything here and it'll give you an output. What is the best model for that? And personally, from my chat GBT video, I think 4.5 is the best model for copyright oriented work. The only drawback is that 4.5 is in research mode which makes it so we don't get as many prompts as we would like. But by the time you watch this video, it could be out of research mode and just more of a mainstream model. Corbin, why is it in research mode? I don't know. Someone got to contact OpenAI and be like, OpenAI, hurry up. We want to use this 4.5 more actively. Let's get active. <laughs> On to the last model here of Opus. As of now, Opus is the highest level model provided by Claude. And just take a real quick sidetrack there. You may see different models here by the time you watch this video. But remember, they push these models out like families where you're going to have your lower tier model, e.g. Haiku in this context, 
and your higher tier model like Opus. And when I use the terminology higher tier and lower tier, it's not like buying a car where it's like, this is a lower tier car or something like that. It's more in the sense of the intelligence and the quality of outputs on certain types of questions. So to be more clear, essentially Opus, you're going to use this model when you want to dive deep in certain questions you really wonder about and get the best answers for. Now, personally, I would opt for something like ChatGPT or Gemini Deep Research to really get a ton of resources on the topic. But for now, we could leverage Opus as well. In these kind of prompts, you want to opt for as much context as possible. The better information you put in, the better information you get out. I guess that's a rule of thumb for any type of AI prompt. But here we go. Give me a step-by-step -step guide of how to raise money for a company. I'm located in Texas. If I provided more information, I would get a higher quality output. And here we go. We get a nice little bullet form list. That covers the three main models we can do within Cloud right now and when to use them. Remember, Haiku, small in, small out, Sonnet, probably most of the workflow, and then Opus. Let's just start thinking deeply. I really want to talk to someone about a very specific topic for very long. Make sure you leave a like. It's completely free. Those should be two random videos over there. Maybe. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.